Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video because today they're adding a bunch of mana spirals. Well, technically not today. Tomorrow they're adding a bunch of mana spirals. So I'm just going to go over them, give my thoughts about them. As you can see here, the adventurers that are getting it are Julietta, Light Axe, Hildegard, Light Staff, Albert, Light Sword, Summer Cleo, Light Bow, Amane, Light Wand, and uh, that's pretty great because there's a brand new Light Agito coming up near the end of the month. And this is, I think, the first time in a long time they've actually added a Mana Spiral where all the units were actually of the element. So, <laughs> um, and some of these I actually can't, I've been waiting for for a while. So I'm really excited about them. I'll talk about them. Remember, if you end up liking this video, remember to leave a like. It helps out the channel a whole bunch, gets me motivated to keep on making stuff as well. Um, comment about which one of these you're going to be looking forward to the most. If you uh, disagree with what I feel, you can politely tell me how you see things in the comments. I'm always willing to listen, man. I'm not the greatest Dragalia player, player, and I can tell you that right now. I am not the greatest Dragalia player, but I do like listening to what other great players feel. Again, it's just how I feel. Alright, let's go into it. First one up, we got Julieta, the girl who basically got me through my entire first five months of Dragalia back in the day, before, before when things were diff different. Um, let's see. Let me see, this is the actual change to it? Yeah, okay. This is the change. Impending Sky deals light damage to enemies directly ahead and restores half of the damage taken while using this skill as a- wait, what? Deals light damage to the enemies directly ahead and restores half the damage taken while using this skill as HP. Okay. Um, Glorious Guard activates Indomitable Spirit for 20 seconds. The user gains the defense increase for 50 seconds and immunity to knockback. Also activates Divine Strike. When this effect is active, the user's next force strike will deal additional damage and reduce foe's strength by 10% for 10 seconds. This effect cannot be cannot stack and will be consumed on use. Defense 15%, Light HP 80% equals Shadow Resistance 6%, Floral Knight increases defense by 20%, also increases strength by 6% for every 5 enemies defeated up to 5 times per quest. Uh, that's not the greatest. Reduces the susceptibility of poison by 100% when the user is hit by an attack that would have poisoned them. Their strength is increased by 15 seconds. What? Their strength is increased by 15% for 10 seconds. After activating this buff will not activate again for 10, 15 seconds. Last Recovery V grants an HP regen buff for 20 seconds when HP drops to 30% three times per quest. After activating this buff, will not activate again for 15 seconds. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, kind of need to see how much. Gonna have to see a lot of like what damage things she's done because for all I know, she could be dealing just like a buttload of damage. Um, this is also shareable. Oh, I hope that you can actually see it a little bit. Let me see if I can fix that on the fly for you. Yeah, that should be a little bit better. That looks cleaner now. Um, yeah, kind of. her problem was always that she doesn't deal a lot of damage, so this should help her get just a little bit more damage but in the Force Strike area. Um, and Axe has recently changed the Force Strike to be slightly better than it was before. The one thing I'm kind of a bomb out, bummed out about is that this 6% is locked to defeating five enemies and for Agido, I mean who knows I haven't we haven't done the light Agido for all I know there's tiny little minions you fight there is definitely a case for harder events making you fight little minions so we'll just wait on that one and see but interested to see if um the damage mods on her skills and stuff and see how she is after that but uh not impressive not impressing me right now on paper uh Hildegard um, but at least they realize that she actually needs attack. That's what she needs more than she needs defense. Her defense is solid, I think. Um, Hildegard, Radiant Savior, restores HP to all allies and removes curses. Also continues healing for the next 15 seconds. That's different, because this skill used to be that, um, it didn't continuously heal. I wanted to say it was just one burst damage and that was it. Not burst damage. It was one burst of, um, HP recovery and that's it. Let me double check on that one just to be sure if they changed that. All right, back. And as you can see here, here at level three, restores HP to all allies with 108% recovery potency and removes curse. So they made it so now this is a continuous effect, which is good. Sacred Guardian grants all teammates a one-use shield that nullifies damage less than 30% of the user's maximum HP and grants all teammates an HP regen buff for 15 seconds. This does not stack with other shields of the same type. Hmm. Okay. Cover potency 20%. Light HP equals HP 6% equals strength 6%. 
Um, ability, skill prep, plus 100% and skill charge. <laughs> and skill charge. <laughs> Fills 100% of the skill gauge at the start of quest. Using a skill also skill gauges by 5%. Okay. Potent curse resistance 100%. Devote oracle. Increase the potency of recovery skills by 50% when HP is 7% or above. Using radiant saver against the user devour oracle effect. When this effect is active, the user's next two force strikes will restore HP to the team member most in need. Wow. This is pretty good, I would say. Again, this is a skill right now that's going to be most useful in the light Agito. Just because I think the high dragon, for the most part, I don't think you really heal. I think all you do is bum rush the dragon until it dies in the first 15 seconds of the fight and then don't worry about anything else. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that one just because I've never done it, but that's always been my impression and why I never actually was very cared, very much cared for it. Um, so obviously I don't think Kildegard will probably be very good for the dragon just because it's a DPS race in that case. Um, but for the Agido, where you usually need a healing unit, I think she could be pretty damn solid. I think this is pretty good, to be honest. Albert? Lightning Burst deals light damage to the target and nearby enemies. Paralyzed foes take extra damage. Thunderous Impulse. Electrifies the user for 25 seconds. When electrified, the user's four strikes will have two charge levels and inflict paralysis on at level 2. And the Lightning Burst skill will be powered by up the skill gauge for... What? Lightning Burst skill will be powered up. And the Lightning skill will be powered up, period. The skill gauge for this skill can be filled by attacking enemies, but when the user is not electrified, this skill gauge also gradually fills automatically. Abilities that increase skill gauge fill rate will not affect this user's automatic increase. Dragon Haze 15%. Light Paralysis equals user critical rate 13%. Impulse Slash grants the user a unique 4 strike and increase 4 strike damage by 50%. Uh, when the user is not electrified, the user's force strike will consume up to 5% of the Thunderous Impulse skill gauge. When the user is electrified, the skill gauge will not be consumed, and force strike damage will be increased by an additional 10%. Opponent resistance 100%. Electrical charge to 3. Increases strength by 30% when attack rate by 10% when electrified. So, from what I remember of Albert, um, he was always seemed like a super cool unit. Because the dudes back in the day who were really good at Albert were really good at one, jumping into the air and then continuously thunder striking over and over and over again. It was like a sight to behold. It was really cool. Um, not 100% sure how this will affect it because I never really used Albert myself. So you can kind of comment on that one. Um, but if this ends up being super great for him, I would love it if uh, he would be able to come back because his playstyle was super cool. The problem is, is that specifically in his fight, he was kind of replaced by the prince because you need the prince's ability to give attack more than you need his ability to just be thunder cool for the entire fight. Um, so we'll see about that one. Next we have Summer Cleo, who I think Summer Cleo was already pretty decent for a light unit, so I don't think she really needed a buff, but I'm happy that she got one because it's Cleo. Um, Paracel shot deals light damage to the <laughs> my fucking tongue, man. The, the heat is getting to me. Deals light damage to, and you know what? I'm gonna. You know what's happening? Is my throat is completely parched. Take a drink break. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Paracel shot deals light damage and inflicts paralysis on the target and nearby enemies, and fires extra shots equal to the number of buffs the user has. The maximum of 5 additional shots can be fired. Tropical Breeze For 10 seconds increases the user and nearby ally strength by 5%, critical rate by 3%, skill damage by 10%, and skill gauge fill rate by 10%. Also grants the user the following additional buffs based on the number of adventurers who were buffed by this skill, including the user. One or more adventurers increase defense by 10% for 10 seconds. Two or more adventurers add 10% to the modifier applied to the critical damage for 10 seconds. Three or more adventurers immediately readies the user's initial. What the hell? Three or more adventurers immediately readies the user's initial skill displayed at the top of their skill list for use? That's. <laughs> skill gauge 15%, increases skill gauge fill rate by 15%. 
Um, light above 10 hits, shadow resistance 10%, paralysis equals skill haste 12%. Um, increases the skill gauge fill rate by 12% for 20 seconds when successfully paralysis of an enemy. Um, potent curse resistance 100% and paralyzed punisher 35%. Uh, did Cleo used to do this? I'd never have used, I've never paid attention to what Summer Cleo did. So let me just quickly see if that's what she does or if I'm just freaking out over nothing. Let me see. I feel that that skill sounds like too good to give to someone. She did not have that before. What the hell? That's crazy. And they increased the maximum of four additional attacks. Man. I was just I guess you just need to see how close by the allies need to be for it to take effect. But I don't know. That seems pretty damn good, to be honest. If you're constantly spamming stuff, even if you can't get all three in the same area, we'll have to see how the Agudo is um, um, structured. Because there's definitely some Agudo where there are parts where everyone is together, and there's definitely some other Agudos where everyone's just across the map and it's a mess. So we'll see about this one. Amane, the final unit. Imper Imperial Leaven deals light damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts paralysis. Paralyzed foes take extra damage. Also deals up to two bonus hits of light damage based on the number of buffs the user has. Hollowed Remnants increases the user's strength by 20% for 10 seconds and increases their max HP by 15% for the remainder of the quest. Once HP buffs reach the limit, an HP recovery effect is granted instead. Skill damage 15%. Light HP equals Shadow Resistance 5%, Skill Prep 100% and Skill Charge. Alright, Punisher Curse Resistance 100% and Broken Punisher 35%. Um, this is definitely... Hmm... Hmm... I think I need to see... She seems like she would be pretty good on paper. No, actually I'm not 100% sure how she looks on paper to be honest. Um, she could be using these skills like crazy with her skill haste and skill charge. Um, and given that she's dagger, she should be able to get her skills pretty quickly. Hmm. I'm interested in her for sure. Uh, as a unit, not as a... I don't care if she says she's like 25 years old. Not interested. Point is... Um... Uh, what the hell was my point? I need to kind of see on this one, because specifically when it comes to buffs given to four and three star adventurers, they always seem not as like, obviously this seems like super crazy fun just reading it, but for four and three units, they usually are a little bit more restraint. Sometimes. I say restraint in the wording of what they give, then when it comes to the actual output of damage, that's where they put everything in there. Um, for example, the, um... What is her name? I can't believe I'm forgetting it right now. She's a three-star water... I think? No. It is... Axe. Karina. Karina, to me, always sounded like, eh, she could be good, and then she ended up being the thing you use in that fight, so... We'll have to wait and see on Amane. She could be very much the same thing for her, um, for her specific place. We'll see. But yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. I'm looking kind of most forward to- I was kind of hoping for Julieta, but I kind of want to make Cleo because she sounds crazy. She sounds- this tropical breeze sounds funny as hell, um, but we'll need to see. I'll have to wait and check it out, but I hope you like this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, and remember, leave a like, comment, all that good stuff. Goodbye.